being here at my talk. So, to the, uh, so I study extreme mode combinatorics and in particular graph theory. So let me first start with a concrete uh, problem. So, so uh, say I have a graph G on uh, vertices. So throughout my talk, uh, G denotes a graph. It's a group. And M is always the number of vertices in the graph. And I care about how much away the graph is from being the property saying triangle free. Okay. So there are two types of quantities we can use to kind of measure uh, how G is off from being triangle free. So the first one is we count the number of triangles in G. So if G is triangle free, then the number of counts is zero. And I can also count um, the number of edges one need to remove from G to make it triangle free. So what do I mean here is, for example, I have a graph here on four vertices. And it has two triangles, and I just need, need to remove the bottom edge to kill all the triangles. OK. So I'm, I'm, I'm curious about how these two quantities are related to each other. Um, so an easy observation is that if the number of edges I need to remove is small, then the number of triangles in G is small. So this is because every triangle should contain an edge uh, that I remove. So uh, this means if two is small, this implies one is small. It would be nice if these two quantities are kind of equivalent to each other. It means if one is small, then two is small. But the other direction is actually very deep. And uh, this is called the triangle removal lemma. So it's a, I'll say the theorem, but it's called triangle removal lemma. And it's uh, by Ruza and Zamoretti in 76. So basically what it says is if the number of triangles in G is little on cube, then I, n I only need to remove little o n square edges to remove all the triangles. Right. Um, so here, the normalization actually matters, because if the number of triangles say I only have one triangle in G, then I only need to remove one edge to kill all the triangles. But if I say I have 0.001 n cube triangles, it's not really clear how many edges I need to remove. Um, so equivalently, let me, instead of using letter O notation, um, I'll say, so for any epsilon in 0, 1, there exists a delta such that if the number of triangles in G is at most delta n cube, then the number of edges I need to remove from G to make it triangle free is at most epsilon n squared. So here, the delta depends on epsilon. Um, another way, equivalent way to say this is for any epsilon, uh, there exists a delta such that if one cannot remove epsilon n squared edges to make G triangle free, then G has many copies of triangles. Has at least delta n cubed triangles. OK, I think the first two statements is easier to remember, and the third one is easier to prove by the proof technique. But they are all equivalent to each other. Uh, so the triangle removal lemma, so there's like uh, three statements here, it looks very innocent. Uh, but in fact, um, it's a very deep result, and it has connection to other fields. So for example, the triangle removal lemma implies row theorem in additive number theory, which says, um, so I think it's in 53. Um, it basically says, for any subset of the integers 1 to n, if the subset does not contain a three-term three arithmetic progression, then the size of the subset is of, of a size little n. Um, and people care about what the little n grows like. 
So for example, Borgain, I think in 2008, here at IES, improved the bound for the Roth theorem. And it was later um, improved, for example, by Sanders and Blue. And uh, the connection to here, to the Roth theorem is that, so first of all, triangle removal lemma implies the Roth theorem. And also, if we can improve the bound, if we can get a very good estimate on delta depending on epsilon, then we can improve the bound in Roth theorem. But neither of these two questions have a very satisfactory answers yet. Uh, okay, as a side note, uh, Roth theorem can later be generalized to study arbitrarily long arithmetic progressions. Um, and later, and it was also instrumental in proof green Tau theorem to show primes contains arbitrarily long arithmetic progressions. And a second application is in the field called property testing, roughly. Uh, so it's a very active field in theoretical computer science. And basically, um, roughly, it says that if we, the bounds in the triangle removal lemma or in the general graph removal lemma basically gives you the fastest algorithm to test, um, fastest randomized algorithm to test um, whether the graph has certain properties or not, to test many properties. Okay, um, so here, so I mentioned a lot about the bounds in the triangle removal lemma. So what, what is the bound here? Okay, so our first data bound, it looks very strange, but then I'll later peek into how we get such a bound. So the bound looks like follows. Um, so from the proof, we can, we can get delta epsilon is at least um, one over. So the denominator looks like this. So it's two to the two to the two to the two. And it's a pi of, pi of twos. And the height is of a polynomial in one over epsilon. OK, so it's a huge denominator. So it makes the number of triangles really, really tiny. And on the contrary, what is the upper bound? So it's by Brehm's construction, um, is purposes for the Roth theorem, but we can translate into the graph theory problem. Yeah, it's five from the original. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it doesn't change too much. It's still tower type. <laughs> and Brehm's construction basically shows, um, so he constructed a graph which is absolutely far away from being triangle free, and the number of copies of triangle is two to the uh, log <laughs> one over epsilon squared. Okay, so this is a tiny denominator and this is a huge denominator. And there is a big gap in between. We don't know where it lies. I think Samaradi says he believes so this bound is closer to the truth, but there's no essential progress in bringing down the tower type bound yet. Okay, so where is the tower type bound comes from? So the, the tower type bound comes from the original, pr original proof of the triangle river molama which uses a big hammer in graph theory, which is called Samaradi's regularity lemma. Um, so I, I'm not going into the details of what the regularity lemma says. I'm just going to give an idea of what it says. So basically, it says for any graph G on N vertices, it looks very messy. You don't know how the edges distribute inside. But the nice thing about this is I can always find a partition of the vertices into equal parts. So a, a small number of parts of the vertices. So say I partition the vertices into n parts. So each of the sets has roughly n over n vertices. And the edges distributed across the two parts behave like a random graph. So say maybe this is like epsilon close to, random, to a random graph and maybe this is edge density half, and maybe between these two is slightly lighter and has edge density 1 over 3.1, and maybe between this two uh, is uh, maybe 1 over 4.5, and uh, between these two is bigger, 1 over uh, 1.9, something like that. And I, I don't care about how the edges distribute within each vertex set. So it means. Oh, a nice thing about the regularity lemma is the, M, the number of parts does, has nothing to do with n. So it only depends on the error parameter epsilon that you're allowed. And um, 
And so how does the regularity lemma implies the triangle removal lemma? So it basically says, if my graph G, I have to remove epsilon n square edges to kill all the triangles, then basically, in the regularity partition, I can find three parts, maybe these three parts, so that between every two parts is like a random graph, and the edge density across them is, is not too small. And if we treat these three parts really like a tripartite random graph, then the number of triangles is basically, say, d1, which are the densities across them, d1, d2, d3, times the number of triples in total. So it's n, to the n divided by m to the three power. And this basically is our delta times n cube. So we can see, oh, so we treat the di's each, each of like a polynomial in epsilon. So it means delta basically depends on what the value of m is. And unfortunately, although Samaritan's regularity lemma gives us a finite number of parts, the finite number m is very huge. And the m is of tower type. So this is basically uh, the size of m. And Gower's, um, I think it's part of his field's middle citation, showed um, m is of tower type. So there's no way we can bring down the value of m. So therefore, this is the best bound we can hope for if we go through the regularity lemma method. Okay. So regularity lemma is a big hammer in graph theory. We can use it to solve lots of open questions in graph theory. Um, but this is a big hammer. It's possible that for some applications of regularity lemma, we just need to use maybe a, a nail clipper to solve that problem. <laughs> but, but we're not sure. So here is a big question. Um, in extremal combinatorics, which asks for which applications of the regularity lemma is the tower type bound necessary. So it's more like a philosophical question. If we are able to now having the tower type bound, it means probably we don't have to go through the regularity methods. Some other uh, nail clipper can just solve it. Um, but then unfortunately, so far, there's no graph theory problem, natural graph theory problem at applications where one has been able to construct an example where the tower type is necessary. where the tower type bound is necessary. So in the case of the usual graph removal lemma, people believe this is closer to the truth um, because no one has been able to show an example of the graph where delta is of the, this tower type behavior. And so finally, now it comes to my work. Uh, the clock working. We proposed, we proposed a strengthening of the usual graph removal lemma, and we hope that this can bring some answer to this big question. So what did we do? Um, so I call it a local graph removal lemma, say local triangle removal lemma. So in a usual graph removal lemma, we consider the total number of edges we kill, uh, we delete to kill all the triangles. So here, we have more constraints on what type, what edges I can delete. So I only, so uh, basically it says if for any epsilon, um, it's a small, there exists a delta such that if uh, G cannot you may triangle free by deleting at most epsilon n edges from each vertex. So this also implies the total number of edges I deleted small. Then some vertex 
is in delta n square triangles. Um, so, so for example, the alien wants to destroy human relationships <laughs> so that uh, there is no three mutual friends, but then he wants to be sneaky so that for each person, I only lose at most epsilon n friends. <laughs> and the question is, for which type of networks can the alien sneaky plan make true? And the answer is, we need some very strong person who has lots of friends. <laughs> yeah, have very stable friendships. <laughs> right. Um, so this is basically a statement. And it's also a characterization of which graphs are uh, close to being triangle free and they're the stronger norm, stronger distance. And the thing is, um, the local triangle removal lemma, so this triangle removal lemma, implies the usual triangle removal lemma. So it's indeed a strengthening of the original uh, triangle removal lemma. However, throughout the proof, one has to use the properties of the regularity partition a lot more than the original one. So uh, by that reason, we suspect in this new version, the delta actually has to be of tower type. And where I'm hoping to construct such a graph where the delta is of tower type, um, basically of this shape, uh, where the height is depending on epsilon. And if this is true, then I can <coughs> potentially